The country with the world's highest level of experience in modern tank warfare is Israel, which, since its establishment in 1948, has fought five wars against some or all of its Arab neighbors. One of the main features of Israel's survival has been the far-sighted manner in which it has built and used its armored force to provide the core of its defensive stroke offensive capability in multi-front campaigns. The Israeli armored force initially relied on British and French tanks, some of them notably old, and then switched to American types as well as much improved versions of the Soviet tanks they had captured in battle. Key features of the Israeli upgrades were the improvement of protection for the crews, which the Israeli army saw as some of its most important assets, and improvement of the armament and its fire control system. All of the Israeli army's vast experience of tank warfare went into the design of its first Israeli tank, the Makava, or chariot. The Makava has excellent protection, good firepower, and performance that emphasizes agility rather than speed. A major feature, is the location of the power pack at the front rather than at the more usual rear of the hull and this provides the crew with additional protection. There is also a small internal compartment that can be used to carry rescued tank crews and the like. The original Macarver Mark I had the M68 105mm gun operated with the aid of the advanced Matador fire control system including a laser rangefinder and digital computer and was supplied with 85 rounds of varied ammunition. The tank carried a 60mm mortar in the rear of the low and fully stabilised turret and also had three rifle calibre machine gun as well as the option for one heavy machine gun over the main armament. The Macarver Mark II introduced in 1983 had greater power and a number of detailed improvements including the addition of provision for reactive armour and the thermal sight to the fire control system for enhanced night fighting capability. In 1989, the Makava Mark III introduced an Israeli-designed 120mm smoothbore gun, firing a range of advanced ammunition of which 50 rounds are carried with the aid of the latest version of the Matador fire control system. The protection is also upgraded with easily changed segments of special armour. The performance is also improved by the introduction of a 1200 horsepower Teledyne Continental power pack replacing the 980 horsepower unit of the Mark III, itself an improvement over the Mark I's 900 horsepower unit. In overall terms, therefore, the Macarver Mark III is a superb example of an AFV tailored for its particular operational niche. One of the final types of tank mass-produced in the USSR before it disintegrated into the Commonwealth of Independent States from 1991 was the T-72, a 41 metric ton vehicle powered by a 785 horsepower diesel engine for good agility and performance. The T-72 was designed for operation in the Soviet's concept of an integrated land battle involving all manner of armor, infantry and artillery under the aerial umbrella provided by tactical air power, this latter including large numbers of Mi-26 helicopters. Known to NATO as the Hind, the Mi-26 is operated in two basic forms as an assault transport helicopter and as a very heavily armed gunship for the close support and anti-tank roles. The T-72 was produced in a very large number of variants and its main armament is the 125mm D-81 smoothbore gun. Some 42 rounds of varied ammunition are provided for this impressive weapon, 22 of them in the advanced auto-loading system whose incorporation allowed the crew to be reduced to just three men. The gun is fully stabilized and used in conjunction with a moderately advanced fire control system. In common with the bulk of Soviet designed equipment, the T-72 is rugged and very reliable and notable for its good blend of firepower, protection and mobility. The Bofors S-103 was an unusual attempt to gain the best benefits of both protection and firepower. It is popularly known as the S-Tank. All tanks have a fully tracked chassis which gives them good mobility over smooth or uneven ground. Conventional tanks have a gun mounted fairly high above the ground in a rotating turret. 
The S-Tank, however, has its 105mm weapon mounted in the top of the low-slung hull, fed by an automatic loader at the rear. The S-Tank is normally crewed by three men, seated centrally, where they are best protected. At a pinch, it could be operated by two, or even one man occupying either of the two front positions. In comparison to a conventional tank, the S-Tank has a remarkably low silhouette. Lacking a turret, the S-Tank aims its gun by swivelling its whole chassis. Elevation and depression of the gun are achieved by raising or lowering the forward and rear parts of the hydro-pneumatic suspension. With a combat weight of just under 40 tons, the S-Tank is also capable of traversing smoothly, despite minor obstacles in its path. A low silhouette is an obvious advantage, allowing the S-Tank to hide easily in a true hull-down position awaiting its prey. If cover is not immediately available, it can dig itself in using a frontal dozer blade, which, when folded back into the traveling position, also adds extra armor protection, particularly to the tracks. The tank elevates and depresses its gun smoothly through 22 degrees, which is better than most tanks can manage. The advanced suspension gives an even ride over tricky obstacles. At the tank's rear, the automatic loader is fed to capacity with 50 rounds. The crew scramble into their positions. The internal layout though futuristic in appearance, is designed for maximum simplicity of operation. This eases the crew fatigue and makes them more efficient. The driver usually aims and fires the gun, acting on directions from the commander. However, the commander has duplicate controls and can take over at will using his gyro-stabilized sights. This can be important when an unexpected target suddenly appears. As soon as a target presents itself, the S-Tank comes to a halt and engages. Cartridge cases are automatically ejected after firing, saving clutter within the vehicle. The tank can then move forward again. Should a threat to the flank emerge, the commander can traverse to meet it or lay down smoke from its eight discharges and tell the third crew member to beat a hasty retreat. This man is normally the radio operator, but he has his own rearward-facing driving controls. The S-Tank has built-in flotation screens, which can be erected quickly to make it fully amphibious. In the water, the tank is propelled and steered by its tracks.
this advanced technology though, including a gas turbine engine to give easy starting in cold weather and a subsidiary engine to keep the systems ticking over while stationary, the S-Tank has one major drawback. It cannot fire while on the move, which makes it primarily a defensive rather than an offensive weapon system.